In this video, we're going to look at process costing using the weighted average method, units in beginning inventory, units in ending inventory, and we're going to do the materials just a little differently. This time we're going to add the materials at the end of the process. Now typically, that would be in a second department such as packaging, where you're adding the packaging materials right at the end. But I don't want to further complicate this problem by having transferred in units yet. So we're just going to pretend that we have a product where all the materials are added at the end. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the spreadsheet. It's set up exactly the same way as the last spreadsheet that we looked at, but I have weighted average method at the top. So let's start with beginning units. We have 75,000 units in beginning inventory. Material dollars are 18,750. Conversion dollars are 9,000. This is exactly what we ended with in the last video. And so one of the things that I just wanted to mention is that your ending inventory at the end of one period becomes your beginning inventory at the next. So we just moved this from our ending inventory in the previous video up to the beginning inventory. But remember, I'm also changing how materials are applied. We're going to apply them at the end just to demonstrate how that looks. So during the month, we add 725,000 units at a materials cost of $170,000 and a conversion cost of $210,000. So my total costs added during the period are $380,000. Now we need to decide how much we have to account for. And so again, we're just going to add the beginning plus what we added. We have 800,000 units to account for. For materials, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to add the beginning plus what I added. For conversion, the same thing. And finally, for total, the same thing. Now, it may not hurt if you are doing this by hand to also add your material dollars and your total conversion dollars together and make sure that you've added them together correctly. So that is a check figure, adding down, adding across, making sure that those are the same number. We completed 717,500 units during the month, leaving 82,500 in ending inventory. Let's look at conversion first. These units are 35% complete with respect to conversion. And even though we generally list materials first, sometimes it is easier to do the conversion column first. We're going to change this from start and complete under the weighted average method. We're just gonna say complete. We're gonna change that under FIFO but under the weighted average method, let's just look at how many we completed. So we completed 717,500 during the month. My ending WIP, remember we're gonna take the 82,500, we're gonna take the amount in ending WIP, and we're gonna multiply that by the degree of completion. So 82,500 times 35%, we have 28,875 equivalent units with respect to conversion in our ending WIP. If I add those two together, I get my total equivalent units. Cost per equivalent unit, we're going to take all of the costs that we have to account for with respect to conversion, and we're gonna divide that by the total equivalent units, again, with respect to conversion, we get a cost per equivalent unit. Now, this is not a nice, neat number, so be sure that if you're doing this, you're taking it out to six decimals. When we want to find our transferred out costs with respect to conversion, we're gonna come down here and take the equivalent units completed, and we're going to multiply that by the cost per equivalent unit. When we want to find the amount of ending inventory value with respect to conversion, we're going to come down and take the equivalent units in ending WIP, times the cost per equivalent unit. And then my check figure is just to take all the costs we have to account for 
subtract out what I'm transferring out, subtract out my ending whip, and make sure that we are, in fact, accounting for them all. And we are. So that looks really good. Now we have to figure out what the materials degree of completion is. For those units that we've transferred out, they're 100% complete with respect to materials, but what about the units in ending whip? Pause the video and see if you can figure out what degree of completion I should put here. If you answered 0%, you are correct. The ending units are only 35% complete with respect to conversion. Therefore, it is not the end of the process. If we add materials at the end of the process, then we haven't added any materials yet. So let's calculate our equivalent units now. We have 717,000 units that have been completed during the month. Those are 100% complete with respect to materials. All of the materials and all of the conversion are always in all of the goods transferred out. With respect to ending whip, we have 82,500 units in ending whip, but they are 0% complete with respect to materials. So my total equivalent units, I'm going to add these two numbers together, is 717,500. If I take all of the costs that I have to account for and divide it by my equivalent units with respect to materials, I get another kind of messy cost down there per unit cost. When we multiply this out, we're going to take the equivalent units transferred out, which is 100% of the transferred out units, times the cost per equivalent unit. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the ending whip times the cost per equivalent unit. Of course, we already know that this is going to be zero. We know that our check figure is zero. We can see that, right? Right there, there's our check figure. The total value of goods transferred out, I'm going to add these two numbers together, 399,278. The value of our ending whip, we want to add those two numbers together, is 8472. My check figure then, if I take all of the costs I have to account for, I subtract out what I'm transferring out, I subtract out my ending whip, that should be zero, and it is. Again, the journal entry, assuming we're journalizing to a second department, is going to be second department whip. The debit is always where the money is going to. We're going to be picking up this amount, right, from the transferred out costs, right, because we're subtracting those. And then where the money is coming from is always the credit. So debits are a use of funds, credits are a source of funds. And again, it has to come right from here. I would like to jump back to the problem that we did before. So I'm going to actually go back to a different spreadsheet tab. And I would just like to point out that when materials are added at the beginning of the process, the equivalent units with respect to materials under the weighted average method will always be the same as the total units we need to account for. Going back to the problem we just did, when materials are added at the end of the process under the weighted average method, total equivalent units with respect to materials will always equal the number of units transferred out. Let's calculate the cost per equivalent unit that was transferred out. We're going to take total cost transferred out and divide it by the total number of units that went to our second department. We get 56 cents. Again, we can add up our cost per equivalent unit and we get 56 cents. You can use either method to calculate your cost per unit under the weighted average method. This concludes this demonstration of how to do the weighted average method when the materials are added at the end of the process and conversion is added evenly.